Hello and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy. Woo! How to monitor patients on vancomycin. Now vancomycin is a very important antibiotic simply because it has potential to cause renal failure. Now this renal failure is usually preventable by monitoring the patient's trough levels. So in this video, we are going to discuss how to dose these patients initially, how to modify the doses, and how to monitor these patients while they're taking the medication. Now to begin, I wanted to provide a little background on vancomycin. Vancomycin is a glycopeptide antibiotic, and it mostly covers gram-positive organisms, right? Including MRSA, the number one concern and the number one use really for vancomycin and clostridium difficile infections c diff in that case we use the oral form of vancomycin now the medical uses are listed here for your information and vancomycin is usually used also when a patient has a penicillin allergy so they can't get let's say any type of penicillins, cephalosporins, or whatever the case is, and you need to cover gram positive, then vancomycin is usually your go-to medication. Now, once these patients are started on vancomycin, they are usually started on the initial dosing, right? And very few patients receive the, a loading dose of this medication. Now, the dose and frequency is based on actual body weight. Okay, regardless if the patient is obese or not. And renal function also plays a role. Now, for patients who are critically ill, right, like patients with endocarditis, patients with meningitis, they usually receive an IV loading dose before they start the maintenance dose. And this is simply to increase the amount of vancomycin in the blood right away. And then the patient will receive, you know, intermittent maintenance doses of the medication and this is usually done in the ED or the emergency room they give the patient a one-time dose of this medication and then they send the patient up to the unit now as I mentioned already you use actual body weight for obese patients also now those modifications after the initial dosing are based on the trough levels which I will talk about a little bit more as we go Institutions may also create something, something known as a dosing table for the initial dosing of vancomycin. And as you can see here, they have the actual body weights here, right? And depending on the crayon and clearance, you get a dose plus a frequency. So every institution may have their own way of doing this, but they usually follow the same idea of you know, the same dosing, right? Like 15 to 20 milligrams per kilogram. And it could be given every eight hours, every 12 hours, or every 24 hours. Now, once the patient is started on this initial dose, what you want to do is monitor the patient, right? Because we want to prevent any renal toxicity from the medication. So we look at something known as a trough. Now, a trough level is simply the lowest level of blood concentration of the medication right before the next dose. So as soon as you give a dose here, right, the uh, amount of vancomycin in the blood increases right away. But over time, it starts to drop. Okay. Now, once it gets here, this is the lowest point it got right the lowest amount of vancomycin you had in the blood before you gave the second dose and brought it back up now when it's up here it's a peak as you can see here now the trough is usually taken 30 minutes to one hour before the fourth dose of the vancomycin is given and this is simply done because we want to make sure the medication is in a steady state and that usually takes about three doses for us to achieve that now, once you're in study state, you could take the vancomycin 30 minutes to one hour before the next dose, right? Whether there's the fourth dose, the fifth dose, the sixth dose, you could get the level and it's appropriate. But we usually want to do it right before the fourth dose. Now, the dose to be given after the trough, right? So if you take the trough, you draw the blood level, right? But right after you draw the blood level, you can actually give a dose, 
okay? But in certain t- cases, they may hold the dose because they are really concerned that the trough level might be a little higher, right? It might be a little higher. So the more medication, the more vancomycin the patient get and the patient is unable to clear it, the higher the trough levels will be and that will increase the patient's chance of developing renal toxicity. Now the trough may be taken earlier if patient has unstable renal function. So you don't even need to wait till it's steady state, right? If the patient has renal fu- like bad renal function, you could check the trough earlier. You don't need to give the patient three doses first in order to check, right? You could do this, and this is what we call dosing the patient by level. I'm going to go through some patient cases as we go on so you will understand this more. Now, dose modifications, once again, this is usually done, right? You only do dose modifications based on the trough level. And the trough level for skin and soft tissue or other infections are usually 10 to 15. And for, you know, sepsis, bacteremia, osteomyelitis, endocarditis, that's all 15 to 20. Now, based on the trough level, the dose should be increased if patient's trough is lower than the target level, right? The dose should be decreased if patient's trough is higher than the target level, if patient's renal function is worsening, all right? So the dose could be skipped in this case also. Remember that. You don't need to give the dose if you think that the renal function may worsen or it's not that stable. Now, when you're monitoring patients on vancomycin or before you verify a vancomycin order, or you're working up a patient on vancomycin before you go around in, you want to consider each of the following. The trough already discussed, but we're going to go through each one of this. So the weight, dose and frequency increases the, the weight, right? It proportionally increases with the weight. They go up at the same time, right? They both go up. So example, assuming the age and renal function is the same in this case, right? Patient A may receive patient A is 50 kilos and will receive one gram every 12 hours of vancomycin, but patient B is 100 kilos and may receive 1.5 grams every 12 hours, right? So because of the weight difference, the patient who weighed more received more of the vancomycin, and sometimes the frequency, you know, the, that patient can also receive it more often. So take that into consideration. Age also plays a role when it comes to um, dosing these patients. So frequency and or dose may decrease with increased age. And this is because we tend to associate older patients with suboptimal renal function, right? They don't have the best kidneys. They may not be clearing this medication. Now, assuming the weight is the same, patient A is 70 years old and will receive one gram once daily. And patient B is 30 years old and will receive one gram every 12 hours, okay? Now, we also want to monitor these patients, right? And when we're monitoring these patients, we look at the serum creatinine. So before you verify, let's say, a vancomycin order, you want to look at the serum creatinine, right? That's the most important thing you want to look for. Now, you want to make sure you evaluate the serum creatinine trend. Don't just look at the current level. So let's say today was January 4th, and I see this level of 0.8. I'm not just going to focus on 0.8. I'm not going to just assume this is the baseline. You have to look at the trend to notice the baseline, right? So the patient's baseline was actually 0.3 when they first came in. And as you can see, it's slowly increasing, right? Now, once you notice that it's increasing, you can use your clinical judgment. Like, okay, the renal function might be worsening. So maybe when this patient is starting this vancomycin, right, they shouldn't be too aggressive, right? They should be a little cautious because the renal function might worsen. Now, if a renal function is worsening, consider lowering the dose and or adjust and or adjusting the frequency. If you have concerns of acute renal toxicity, Consider obtaining a vancomycin trough, okay? And just to make sure the trough is enraged before you give the next dose. So that's when you're going to hold the dose until you get the results of the trough. And also, you could assess patient's urine output, 
okay if that's possible if the patient is not making a lot of urine you're probably not clearing the medication neither so regardless of what you get for let's say the serum creatinine or creatinine clearance if the patient is not making urine you should probably dose adjust also decrease the dose decrease the frequency if you have to please note that the serum creatinine trend rule also applies for creatinine clearance also like before you verify the medication or you're monitoring these patients look for the indication as this will help you determine the duration of the vancomycin also if you could see the uh, cultures that was taken um, that will also help you when you're monitoring or working up these patients for rounds, right? Just check to see if they're using the vancomycin for the right purposes, right? For the right bug. And that's all you really have to do. Now, I have some patient cases here. And these cases will allow you to, like, kind of develop the thought process when you're evaluating a patient on vancomycin, okay? Or before you verify a vancomycin order, this is a male patient. We have the weight and the age here for you. This is the right GFR, or let's just say creatinine clearance and a serum creatinine. And this vancomycin was started on April 1st, right? And this is the dose here, 1.25 grams every 12 hours to be infused over one hour. The indication is sepsis. And the patient has received one, two, three doses. Now, based on the patient's weight and age, I agree that 1.25 grams Q12 is appropriate, right? It's not always think of one gram Q12 as kind of like the baseline for like that the average patient in terms of age and weight, one gram Q12, okay? And just work from there. So this patient is, you know, younger, a little heavier. So yeah, they could definitely get 1.25 grams every 12 hours, Okay, now the dose and frequency is appropriate. Like I said, the trough is due before the fourth dose, right? In this case, on April 2nd, and they're going to aim for 15 or 20 because the patient is septic. And you want to monitor the serum crayon since it's increased slightly, right? 0 0.9 to 1.1. It may not be significant now, right? But just keep your eye on it. If it goes up, it's a chance it might go up. A little bit more right so just just monitor for that so for patient case two um, as we see right away you know the renal function is very poor this is a female he has the weight the age and this patient was starting vancomycin right it started on 4-1 April 1st vancomycin 1 gram every 24 hours for pneumonia now, they took the trough before the uh, April 4th dose, and they got 9.4. The initial dose could have also been 750 once daily, right? The patient is 68, so they're old, but not too old. They, they're they kind of heavy, right? They're kind of on the high end in terms of the weight. And the renal function, right, when they started on 4.1, it was 3.7. So just taking taking into consideration just the renal function and the age alone, right? The serum cannon, you could have probably done 750 also. But as you can see, the patient's renal function started to improve a little bit. So the trough was low. Now, based on the trough, what do you want to do? You could do you could increase the dose, right? If the patient's renal function is actually in, like improving, you can increase the dose to 1.25 grams or 1.5 grams every 24 hours, right? But you want to be more conservative as a pharmacist, and I would probably go with the 1.25 grams um, once daily in this case, right? And just monitor the renal function. If the renal function goes back up the next day, you probably want to decrease that back to 1 gram, right? Just to be conservative. It's, if it keeps dropping, leave it at 1.25 grams. But if it drops so significantly, and let's say it's less than less than one right then you just you have more room right so you know increase the dose if you need to patient case three is a female here's the weight age of 74 the gfr here the serum creatinine levels are here looks okay in terms of the trend 
The patient started on April 1st, vancomycin, one gram every 24 hours to be infused over one hour. This was a skin infection and they took the trough before the April 4th dose and the level was 18.9. So the initial dose is acceptable in this case, right? Based on the patient's weight and age, you know. Patient is, you know, old. You're not that heavy, right? And the renal function is not that great, all right? So you can just give them one gram just once daily. The frequency is also okay based on the renal function. Trough is high for the indication, right? Skin infection. If it's not really touching the bone, we usually aim for 10 or 15. The trough is high for that indication, so the dose could be decreased to 750 um, once daily and just keep the patient around there. For patient case 4, we have a male who's 67 kilos, 81 years old, receiving vancomycin 750 once daily to be infused over one hour for skin infection. And here we have the serum creatinine trend and it seems like it's increasing. So it seems like this patient is experiencing an acute kidney injury. And it may be appropriate to dose this patient by levels. In other words, we want to obtain a random vancomycin level before each dose. So the patient got the 4-4 dose, right? For the 4-5 dose, you want to check the trough, right? You want to get the level before you give that dose. But what we're gonna do, since the patient's renal function is not doing good, let's say it increased also the next day, we wanna hold that dose until we get the level back. Once we get the level, if the level is in range, right, then mm, we might skip the dose, right? We don't need to give it. If it's elevated, elevated, we might, we definitely are gonna skip the dose. If it's low, we are gonna give the dose. Okay, if it's in range, you really have an option to either hold it or actually give it. It really depends, you know, if you really feel like the renal function is going to improve or just check the level, right? Just check the level. If the level is in range and, you know, the patient is making urine or whatever the case is, all right? You got to leave, you got to use your clinical judgment in that case. There's no right or wrong answer in that case. Um, If... Like I said, if the renal function continues to worsen the next day, right? Obtain another level before each dose, before each dose. Just make sure the patient only receives a dose where the trough is less than 20. Patient case number five, this is a male who's 82.1 kilos, 31 years old. We have the renal function here, seems okay. They started this patient on 1.25 grams every 12 hours for skin infection. They took the trough right was taken before the 4-4 dose and the level was 5.4 this patient is young right kind of heavy the trough was low so the dose can be increased to 1.5 gram every 12 hours and monitor the renal function closely all right the patient's renal function went up a little bit but went back down but still just keep your eye on it because the patient is on such a high dose of the uh the vancomycin now, based on the age, the weight, and the renal function, patient could have actually even received 1.5 grams every 12 hours as the initial dose. Now, this is a female weight, 45 kilos, 63 years old, and here's the renal function. Vancomycin, 1 gram every 12 hours was started on this patient um, for skin infection once again. Seems like all these patients have skin infections, right? The dose is technically okay for this patient based on the age, weight, and renal function. But the patient's weight is on the lower end, right? I would say in terms of weight. And the age is kind of on the higher end. Not too old, but mm, old. Therefore, you could have technically and you could have been conservative and started a patient on 750 milligrams every 12 hours. And then, you know, just check the trough and go based off that. Oh, this is actually case number seven. So in this case, we have a male who is 98 kilos, 49 years old, and here's the renal function also. Okay, it looks like it went down, but then it went back up, right? It went up by 0.4, but then it remained consistent for the next day. 
And this patient is getting vancomycin 1.25 uh, grams every 12 hours to be infused over one hour. Assuming you saw this order before it was verified, the patient is heavy and not too old, right? Dose is okay, but in this case, the renal function, you just need to monitor the renal function, right? The dose is definitely appropriate. Um, just make sure the renal function, it goes back down. This patient is really heavy and they're, they're actually young, you know, so they could... They could probably uh, take 1.25 grams with no problem, mainly because of the weight and the patient is young. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know the renal function is at 1.3, but it's 56, so there's a chance it might improve, right? You give the patient one dose, let's say. Let's say the patient only received uh, one dose, right? Then when it got to 4.4, the renal function got worse. So the shrimp cran was like 1.6, right? You could, what you could do in that case, it seems like it's getting worse, right? 0 0.9, 1.3, 1.6 is going up. You could check the level if you want, right? Or you could decrease this dose to one gram. So like dose and vancomycin is really an art. There's no textbook way to do this you know you got to really use your clinical judgment when you're dosing these patients so just try to think of the average patient as one gram every 12 hours and then go on from there to see if you should increase the dose or decrease the dose and usually sometimes you don't even know right with the initial dose sometimes you may be completely wrong okay so just um keep that in mind and try to use your clinical judgment when it comes to dose and vancomycin. It should be, it should come naturally, right? Because it just it makes sense. Younger patient gets more, heavier patients get more, right? Older patients get less. Renal function, hold, check level, right? So you do everything based on the trough, really. So don't be scared to, to ask for a trough and always keep your eye on the serum creatinine. So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope I was able to you know, explain this in the best way to make you feel comfortable when it comes to vancomycin and how we go about it in clinical practice. Because in clinical practice is definitely different from what you learn in the textbook. So notice how I didn't even calculate any doses for these patients, right? I didn't use that 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram. I just use my clinical judgment based on the patient's age, the patient's weight to determine what those might be appropriate. So that's how you should want to approach everything that you learn in the textbook. You want to bring it into you know clinical practice and just approach it in that direction. So if this video is helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. Show it to somebody that could definitely benefit from it. And I would definitely appreciate that. So until then, I hope you take care and I'll see you soon.